It has all come to this, the GPU battle for the ages. A test of performance, price and practicality. Boomer vs Zuma, former flagship vs modern entry level, this is... Epic with Battles of Victory! Uh, um, I, actually no. It's... <laughs> In this GPU duel, I'll be comparing gaming results from two closely matched graphics cards from across a gulf of four generations. While both the GTX 780 Ti and GTX 1650 score closely enough in 3D Mark Time Spy, the similarities end there. The former was Nvidia's answer to the rise of demand for 4K gaming in the early 2010s and was a beastly card with a beastly price to match. The latter is a thoroughly modern, entry-level model designed to fit into lower power envelopes and small form factors and was greeted with a collective shrug by the tech media. Will the newer architecture and increased VRAM count in the 1650s favour or will the 780Ti's pedigree shine through? Why am I asking you? Both cards encounter a CPU limitation playing Fortnite at 1080 competitive settings. At high, with epic view distance though, the 780Ti claims an early victory, leading the 1650 by 79 frames to 67. Performance wise, it's a dead heat in Call of Duty Warzone. 1080 low results in 68 FPS on the old card and 70 on the new. Although during testing the 780Ti exhibited some hideous glitches, that has apparently been fixed recently, making this anybody's game. Oh, this isn't even a fair race. The 780Ti gets blitzed off the line in Forza Horizon 4 by the 1650, which wins by an incredible 50%. The 780Ti is playable at 1080 high, scoring 67 FPS, however the 1650 just passes 100 FPS, potentially leaving room to push settings or resolution even higher. Another win for the newer card, however Watch Dogs Legion fails to reach 60 FPS on either GPU at 1080 medium settings. The 780Ti scores just 48, whereas the 1650 reaches 57. While the new card can probably get to 60 with a drop to low, the 780Ti would need a drop in both quality and resolution to see a 60fps average. This one won't count against the 780Ti in the final score, but it's another benefit for the new card. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is one of several games that fails to run at all on Kepler cards due to their lack of DX12. Doom Eternal hates Kepler with a passion. While I've heard it argued that VRAM is the issue, I'm afraid not even the one gigabyte difference between the competitors can account for this massacre. The 780Ti scores 55 FPS at 1080 low, while the 1650 runs rings around the old card at 81 FPS using high settings. Horizon Zero Dawn sees a 20% difference stepping up to the 1650 from the 780Ti, jumping from 43 FPS on the old card to 52 on the new when tested at 1080 original settings. Not to mention, the Kepler architecture cards suffer from weird artefacting that, while subtle, is annoying and could lead one to believe they have a faulty card. In a surprise reversal, Cyberpunk 2077 sees the 780Ti defeat the 1650 by the same margin as it lost in Horizon. The 780Ti hits 45 FPS at 1080 low, whereas the 1650 only manages 38. Finally, and once more this is a tough break for the 780Ti and won't be counted in the final results. Kepler cards are technically unsupported in Resident Evil Village, though it is possible to download some very old drivers and make it work. On these drivers, the old card can manage 66 FPS at 1600 by 900. This however doesn't hold a candle to the 1650's 93 FPS at 1080, without having delved into the Guru 3D archives to get there. <sighs> f*** me, this is exhausting.
So, with a total of 7 games counted, the 780 Ti scores a respectable average FPS of 58.9. However, the 1650 wins by a convincing 13%, with an average FPS of 66.9. Well, that's the frames out of the way, and uh, thank god, because I didn't know how long I could keep up that level of enthusiasm. Performance is, of course, just part of the story. After all, to test the GTX 780 Ti, I had to disregard the results from one game, couldn't even benchmark another, and had to suffer through glitches and compatibility issues in several others. On the used market today, a 780 Ti goes for between £125 and £175. A GTX 1650 with GDDR6 costs about £250, but as it's rated to run on 175 watts less power than the 780 Ti, the older card costs about an extra 3 pence per hour to run. If you run both cards for 2,500 to 4,000 hours, they could end up actually costing about the same. But 780 Ti owners will spend those 2,500 to 4,000 hours encountering glitches and games that just don't run. At current prices, you have to weigh up whether the money you save is worth the headaches. With all that considered, I declare the winner of this GPU duel to be the GTX 1650 GDDR6. This is an incredible result for an underrated card that got knocked pretty heavily by its critics on launch in 2020. While GTX 780 Ti owners perhaps shouldn't throw out their old workhorse just yet, it might be a good time to start looking for an upgrade. But what do you think? Who won? Who's next? You decide! Uh, actually, uh, no you don't. <laughs> I, I can't just go buying cars you guys ask for. It's still a bloodbath out there and I'm doing all this out of pocket. Still, leave a comment and let me know what you think of the result and also if you like this format or not. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined and I'll see you next time.